Good evening, Magic family. Uh, this is um, this is going to be the tutorial that I had promised in my last video. Um, so the reason I'm doing this tutorial was um, I did a quick one with brother um, with one of these. Um, and it seemed to get a lot of questions about why I built things a certain way. Um, a lot of positive comments. Also a lot of questions to know, you know, um, why I build the way I do. And, um, it's generally been successful for me. Um, it's been very rare that I've gone into a, a sealed tournament and haven't come out with prizes or come out and come out at least in the top three. Um, so I figured, you know what, I'm not sure if, uh, if I have much to share but I'll be able to kind of give you my uh, my input and my ideas of how I think this might work um, so uh, I did manage to pick up uh, one of these pre-release packs from uh, uh, what's it called uh, mind games here in metro town of Vancouver uh, a little pricey um, and I'm actually kind of interested because it looks I'm not sure if it looks like it's been resealed what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to see when I crack this thing open if I get like just some junk promo rare uh, or if the packs have been tampered with or anything like that. So we'll have to see. Um, but uh, I don't know. For me, I don't know. Maybe it's me just being paranoid. But uh, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to uh, do it as if I was playing in a tournament. If this was pre-release day, and I'm going to build this deck to, you know, try and go 4-0. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let's really kind of, let's just delve into it here. So I'm going to start with the shaky camera, guys. Try not to hit the table. Even the plastic feels weird. I don't know if it's just me. All right. So, uh, reason to believe, so blue, pay one, try three, and then uh, four and one green, aftermath, look at the up card of your library, you may put it into the battlefield if it's a creature card, if you don't, put it into your hand. Um, so, not horrible, but not fantastic at the same time, I suppose. Um, we're going to get rid of those because I don't need those. Cool. So there's our four hour of devastation and our two Amiket. Now, with the second set, whenever the second set comes out, I'm always going to start with what I know. So trying to think about it, I always had more experience with Amiket. So when I crack these, um, I'm going to do a couple of different things. Once again, when, when, I'm, when I'm building these, I'm not looking at value. You know, if I get something really great, awesome. Um, so, I mean, obviously starting with a Mythic in black um, with Bontu. Um, so, he's, he's a 4-6 for 3. Menace and Indestructible. He can't attack or block unless your creature died under your control this turn. Or, and, I should say and, pay 1-1 one one black, sacrifice another creature, scry 1, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. So it's a not only is a draw engine, um, it allows you then to attack with him, you know, turn four, for with a four six. If you can obviously get get this mechanic online, so not a bad card. Don't get me wrong. This is this is a fantastic card. I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit more here. Cool. There we go. So. Um, I will generally separate my rares into a separate pile, so I'm just going to put those over there. Um, and then I know it, realistically, I'm just going to go through and organize, maybe I will zoom out a little bit more. There you go. Uh, organize by color. Um, uh, I'm just going to keep a separate pile for rares. Um, and as I'm going through these, I'm looking at like, oh hey, this might be a good card. Um, or, you know, I would imagine I would, ooh, Black Cartouche, that's pretty good. Uh, get to the Afterlife, um, Six Cents, and Stir the Sands. Um, so, as I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, well, pack one is Black with a Cartouche and a Miastic Mummy. Um, and realistically, like, the green has got a Bitter, uh, bitter Blade Warrior in it. Um... 
Really, other than that, there's not a whole lot of, uh, I mean, there's a little bit of control with the fan bearer. So I'm already starting to kind of build an idea of what this deck might be able to do. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not picking a particular archetype. I'm not, you know, harsh mentor. Um, there, there. Um, I, all I'm pretty much doing is looking at these cards to say, okay, well, you know, what, what do I have here? Is there any synergy? Do I have, you know, what are my bombs? Um, obviously, what removal do I have? Um, you know, there's your green cartouche. Um, you know, nest of scarabs is is it, is it not a bad card? Baneful amet, fantastic card. Um, uh, so already, I'm kind of like, man, I could go black red, I could go black green, I could go green black, or um, green red. Um, we'll see. You know, and then we start delving into the uh, the Hour of Devastation stuff. So same thing. Um, so there you go. You know, of our we have our first green rare and resilient Kenra. Um, we have a solitary camel, an open fire, so there's some removal. Uh, tragic lesson, some card draw. Um, sandblast, once again, removal. Um, warning whale, uh, blah. Um, fantastic card. I just realized I was doing that off camera. Um, fantastic card. For five mana in limited, um, vigilance and reach for the 4 4. Really hard to get rid of unless you have something like sandblast. So, and the fact that it has Vigilance and Reach. Um, Guilty Gargadon is really, really good. Ruin Rat's actually pretty decent. There's our, uh, our Desert. Um, here, let me center this a little bit more. There we go. Um, Striped River Winder. Eh, not too bad. Um, surprisingly, I love this card. Most people didn't play it a whole lot at the pre-release. Um, but for 5 mana for a Flicked 3 and a 5-4, yes, it has to attack every turn. Um, but... I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, there's our second split card. There we go. Um, so, also when I'm looking at these, I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I mean, removal's great. Um, foil Desert of Indomitable. And uh, uh, Dejuru with Open Eyes. So I haven't got two on-color rares yet. Um, obviously, hopefully bound to happen. Um... Rampaging Hippo, another great card. Carrion's Creature, some eh. Uh, life Goes On. Um, great in green, white life gain. So if I had, like, say, the Crested Sunmare, you know, this card plus Crested Sunmare is, you know, automatic, automatic inclusion. Uh, a Cursed Horde and Bane Whip Punisher. Uh, what does this guy do? Enters the battlefield, put a, you may put a minus one minus counter on target creature. So not target creature control. Sacrifice being with punisher to strike target creature with a minus one minus one counter on. So if you can get the synergy going, I mean it's not one this card doesn't say, you know, that you uh, that baneful punisher put the counter on. It's any creature with a minus one minus one counter. So um, our promise, so search your library for up to two land cards, put them into the battlefield, tap and shuffle your library. If you do control three or more deserts, create a two two. So, um, you know, if we can get black green tokens going um, with Bontu, yeah, it might work out. We'll have to we'll have to see what else we have. Um, Richard Campbell, run us a stalwart. I like that card. Um, Lurching rock beast, strategic planning, another desert. Um, uh, for the Forgotten Pharaohs, Defiant Kenra, Vanilla Creature, uh, Oasis, Inferno Jet, so there's some more removal, um, and Sunsworth's Champion, which is really, really, really good and limited. Um, yeah, the, the Eternalize for four um, is so good. So good. So. And let me know. Let me know what you guys think. I, 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 do, you, do you agree with my... Uh, ooh, Foil Jace's Defeat. Um, do you guys agree with my, uh, ooh, a Slemity. There you go. Um, do you guys agree with my, uh, ideas and stuff like that? Do you, you know, what would you guys do differently? Um, as a player, um, when it comes to Constructed, I generally build aggro decks. 
I'm an aggro player through and through. Um, but obviously when it comes to limited, um, your, the amount of wins that you're going to obtain, at least in my experience, is purely based on how much removal you have. Um, and how your curve is, you know, are, are you having to wait till turn four or turn five to play something? Whereas if you're running up against an opponent who's got turns, you know, two, three, four playing, you're already in a bad, um, board position. And it's really hard to come back from that unless you have some serious bomb cards. Um, so it's tough. It it really really is tough to to kind of say what's gonna what's gonna work. Um, so now that I have all the cards unpacked, um, now I start taking a look at like okay, well, you know what are, what are, where do I where do I have most of my creatures now? Obviously, for those of you who who haven't played limited um, before, you want a forty card deck. Uh, on average, 16 to 17 land, uh, which is going to leave you between, um, you know, 23 and 24 non-land permanents. Um, on my habit, um, and I think which is why I, I generally win more often, is I go super creature heavy. A lot of people like to play non-creature spells, um, you know, tr um, battle tricks and stuff like that. I would rather just play out way more creatures than my opponent can deal with. Um, now, there is quite a bit of um, board wipe in this set, so obviously you have to be cautious of, um, uh, you know, the black, what's the, uh, hour of, the, the black wrath, I can't remember what, what it is. But anyway, there's quite a few wrath effects in this set. So being super aggro and super creature heavy can sometimes come back to bite you in the butt. Um, but that being said, um, you know, Usually you can outrace them. Um, if not, you can, if you can't outrace them with the amount of eternalize and graveyard um, manipulation that you can do, you can usually come back from 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 a uh, a massive board wipe. Um, so I'm not going to worry about the lands for now. Those lands, those are those are our deserts. Um, I'm not going to worry about them for now. We'll see what else, what we have here. Um, we do on just as an idea, we do have three green. I'm oh, sorry, four green. Um, deserts. We have two oasises and two of the desert of the indomitable. So, two cycle lands. Um, and two where I can, you know, pay three, sacrifice the desert. Darker creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Um, this is great for color fixing. So Survivor's Encampment allows you to tap it and tap it on un tap creature control um, to gain one mana of any color. So if we end up going three colors, which is always a possible thing, um, a great, great fix. And then we have a little bit of, um, we have... A, uh, a cycling uh, red or blue or yeah, cycling um, white desert, and then we do have um, Rami Nap Ruins, which does the two damage to to each opponent. Um, so a great thing to have if you're going to play red, Rami Nap Ruins is is going to be super clutch. I know it's really big in in actual constructed play right now, um, but you know having that late game, uh, you know two damage to the face finisher. Um, a lot of people will forget you have that, um, and then they might play a little bit differently, and then when you pop it off, they, you can see them roll their eyes and get frustrated with themselves. So, um, cool. So the next thing I, I generally will do is I'll look at artifacts. Artifacts, and then I'll go to the rares, and then I'll kind of work at everything else. Um, so, um, Sunset Pyramid, I tried playing with this in the pre-release. Um, I play-tested it in my deck before the actual tournament started. Um, I really don't like it. Um, the fact that um, you can only draw three cards off of it, and I'd rather be playing a creature on turn two or turn three um, than, than this guy. So I'm gonna say no to that. Um, Graven Abomination, uh, whenever he attacks, exile target creature um, from defending, defending player's graveyard. It's a three for three one with arguably 
a pretty weak stance with all the minus one minus one counters out there um there's a good chance he's either gonna be gonna be going to get attacked once um and by turn four when he attacks um more than likely there's not going to be an eternalized creature in the graveyard or anything like that so that's a maybe a, a sideboard if you come against a, a super graveyard heavy deck um maybe something you can side in but for you know main board i'm not going to worry about it uh wall of the forgotten pharaoh so zero four defender uh tap he does one damage target player um yeah no uh watches the dead uh exile it. each opponent chooses two cards in his her graveyard and exiles the rest uh let's not give your opponents the options uh get to the afterlife whenever a non-creature token you control dies you gain one life uh then you may draw a card if you do discard a card or pay two sacrifice gate to the afterlife search your graveyard hand enter a library for a card named god pharaoh's gift and put it into the battlefield well we don't have god pharaoh's gift and realistically this first ability not worth it um hone kapesh uh you know what not, not a horrible card <laughs> it, it, it is a one uh you know one attach one or one cast one to equip uh one one but in a game where most creatures are curving out at three toughness, um, if you can get something with that's a three three or a you know four four, and you can slap this on it, um, that can turn a regular card into a bomb uh, pretty pretty easily. So definitely in on like the maybe list. Um, now the split cards um, are super maybes because we don't know what we're playing yet. So we only have the two. We've consigned to oblivion. And we have reason to believe. Both of them obviously start with blue. Um, the consign isn't horrible. I mean, being able to uh, being able to bounce something back to a player's hand um, sometimes is beneficial. And obviously, the reason at the scry three um, isn't you know it's not not it's nothing to shake a stick at. And if you're going to play green or you're going to play blue black or blue green, um, these are definitely cards that you would potentially think about playing. Um, so these are kind of, you know, we'll seize. Um, so let's start with the rares. Now, obviously, Solemnity, um, Solemnity is obviously one of the better rares of this set. Now, it's great for constructed, but not for no source limited. So players can't get counters, so he's good for planeswalkers. Um, and counters can't be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. So once again, not a fantastic card in limited but can be useful. So um, I'm going to kind of make a maybe, a white maybe pile. That's a maybe. Um, Hour of Promise, um, being able to thin out your your deck for any two lands, which means if you can search for, you know, two, two deserts if you want them. Um, and then you get to uh, put two, 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 Two two black zombie creature tokens into play. Um, if we end up playing black green um, or any sort of color, uh, this is probably going to be pretty good. So that's definitely a maybe. Um, Juju with rise up with eyes wide open with eyes open. Wow, that song is it Nickelback? I can't remember what it is. Um, anyway, so it's a for five. It's a four three vigilance. When you enter the battlefield, you may search your library for a planeswalker card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand and shuffle your library. If a source would, you, you would deal, yep, no, we don't have a Planeswalker, um, and realistically, 5 for a 4-3 Vigilance um, is not horrible. Um, there are a lot of Planeswalkers, you know, people are cracking, um, you know, Temet and, uh, and Nicol Bolas, so a maybe. Um, Resilient Kenra. For two for a two two, when it enters the battlefield, you may have target creature gets plus X plus X until under turn where X is resilient, Kenra's power, and then pay six to eternalize. Uh, that is an auto include for green. Uh, Harsh mentor. Uh, whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact creature or land on the battlefield, if it isn't a mana ability, Harsh mentor deals two damage to that player. Um, I mean that's I mean even two two for two for two two with even a half of that ability is pretty good, um, but the fact that there are so many triggers that, that, are, that are happening um, is an automatic include for red. Um, and obviously we, we know about Bontu. If we're gonna be playing Bontu or black, Bontu's going in the deck. So um, where we didn't really touch on was blue. 
So let's take a look at our blue and see what this is gonna look like. Now obviously we don't have a clock right now. Normally there would be a 50 minute clock ticking down so I wouldn't be going this slow, but I do wanna give you guys an idea of kind of my thought process. And obviously I don't wanna make this video super, super long. Um, but that being said, I wanna give you guys a kind of a, an insight into my deck building, you know, mind space. Um, so Seer of the Lost Tomorrow is milling. So if if we wanted to build a mill deck, say we got some fraying, if we got a fraying sanity in our hour of dosation, and we had the seer of last tomorrow, um, yeah, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be game. We're gonna mill our opponent. Um, Spellweaver Eternal, um, afflict two for a one a two one with prowess. So. Not a horrible card, so this is a maybe. So the way that I always do it, I have yeses. Like, if I'm going to play this card, if I'm going to play this this color, these are the cards I'm going to play. These are the ones that are going to be like, eh, we'll see. Um, I also, I have a no pile, which is this stuff over here. Um, we had agreed that, you know, I really wasn't going to be playing any of this stuff. So I have a no pile. So that way I'm not confusing myself. By the time I have... I've gone through all of my colors. I'm like, okay, these are my usable colors in these in usable cards in these colors. Um, what's you know what's the best combination? What has synergy? Um, or generally, you know what what's the most fun to play? Um, so, um, foil Jace's defeat, fantastic card, uh, a beautiful card actually. That's a that's a beautiful art. Try to get some good light on that. Anyway, um, catcher target blue spell. If it was a Jane's Chase Planeswalker, scry too. Well, there's no Jaces in this set. Um, and honestly, two for a two counter spell in blue, meh. Um, strategic planning, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, the rest on your into your graveyard. Um, if you're gonna play um, graveyard interactions, um, not bad. If you're able to recur things from the graveyard, um, not too bad. Uh, another Spellweaver Eternal. Um, or sorry, yeah. Another Spellweaver Eternal. Um, also, another Seer of the Last Tomorrow. So, looking at it, as I'm going through it, I'm looking at it, okay, well, there's quite a bit of mill in here. Um, and if I have enough non-creature spells to make Prowess a thing, you know, potentially play this. Um, so we have Unquenchable Thirst, uh, when it's the battlefield, you, if you control a desert, or if there's a desert in your graveyard, tap target creature, uh, it does not untap during its controller's untap step. Um, interesting, that's a permanent lockdown, it does not say your next, your target creature doesn't untap during its next, controller's next untap step, so which means it's a permanent lockdown. So there you go, some control. Oh, I'm gonna Sphinx, uh, at least, you know, flying, evasion, good and limited. Um, whenever you cycle or discard a card, target creature gets a target, creature and opponent controls gets minus two, minus zero. Um, so obviously the fact that you can cycle as an instant, um, thus using this as a battle trick, um, that's definitely an include. Um, seven for a five, five hex proof, um, pay one to cycle, um, yeah instantaneous if you draw that late game you play it if you draw an early game you cycle it um to draw you know more stuff so um tragic lesson draw two cards then discard a card unless you return a land you control to its owner's hand um if you're gonna play blue sure um winds of rebuke uh pay two return target non and permanent to its owner's hand each player puts the top two cards of his or graveyard right into or his or library to the graveyard right. so once again i'm gonna put that in the maybe pile because if we end up playing a mill deck that's three cards that are like instant mill. Um, once again, I don't think we're gonna go that route with this, but you never know. Uh, Ancient Crab, three for a one five, no thank you. Uh, Scribe of the Mindful, uh, sacrifice it, return target instant or source three cards from your graveyard to your hand. Once again, maybe if we have the right cards for it. Uh, then we have a uh, Top Crop Skirmisher, so two for a two one with an Embalmed four. Um, eh, I'm not overly loving it. So looking at it, like our blue, obviously blue is normally very controlly. They usually have quite a few bounce spells, um, or, you know, combat tricks. 
it's really just kind of a mismatch of everything. Obviously, we have two of the, the, the Eternals. Um, honestly, at this point, just looking at my blue pool, I'm not playing blue. I'm actually going to take blue. I still have it separated over here in this pile. So I have the good cards on top and the bad ones separated by that 1-5 crab for three. Um, yeah. So at this point, just kind of knowing what I have, I'm leaning towards red, green, or black. Or some sort of combination of the three. Um, at this point, because I already kind of know that most of my most of my good cards are in these color coat or these colors, um, I'm gonna look at white next just to see if it's viable. Does splashing white or does adding white as a potential third color to two of the other colors make sense? We do have a certain amount of color fixing, which is very very helpful. Um, we didn't get any manoliths, which kind of sucks, um, but that's okay. So, um, Dauntless Aven, 2-1 for flying whenever he attacks, untap target creature control. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, Active Heroism, untap target creature, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn, and can block an additional creature. Uh, a good combat trick. Um, most people are wouldn't be expecting you to play it, um, but that's kind of in the maybe pile. Um, Sunscourge Champion is a yes. <laughs> um, Mummy Paramount, uh, whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, Mummy Paramount gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Um, with the amount of zombies that are happening in no matter what color you're going to play, um, I would imagine, you know, even a, even 2-2 two -two for a 2, vanilla um, isn't great. But with this added ability and all the extra zombies that are going to be coming into play, um, I would probably include it. Um, Dutiful Servants is a no. Uh, another Dauntless Aven. Um, Sandblast is removal, so it's an immediate yes. 3-2 yes. um, for 3-2 three, three, lifelink, because we are going to be playing um, at least some, some deserts. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's an immediate include. Uh, whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, you may tap target artifact or creature. So there's your control um, aspect a little bit. Um, Mighty Leap is a no. Uh, and Fan Bearer is a yes, because that's some control. It's slow, but it is a 1-2 for 1. So more than likely you play that on turn 1, you know, you beat in turn 2, you play something else. Um, or if they play something, then you... Uh, you potentially just tap it down. So, but anyway, um, so at this point, um, those are our yeses. So if we're gonna play white, those are the cards we like. This is the card is kind of a maybe. I apologize, this is taking like 27 minutes already. Holy smokes. All right, so now let's really delve into, oh, I forgot we had the, the Giroux and Solemnity. So I'm gonna put those with the maybe pile. Cool, so now let's look into green, because realistically green, I think is going to be one of the colors we're going to play, just based on the amount of lands that we have, the amount of um, things that I saw just going through here. Um, so our promise is still the maybe. Um, don't get me wrong, it's a great card, uh, and being able to thin your deck for two land, or at least two, you know, two land, or potentially even two deserts if you don't have enough. Um, would obviously work well with the camel in the white color or um, some of the other cards in black. So we'll see. Um, Resilient Kenra is an auto include, even if it was, even if it only, if only if it had the top part and not the internalize, two for a two, two is great. Um, beneath the sands, search your library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield tab and shuffle your library, or you cycle two. Immediate color fixing. Um, that's an, that's an auto include. Uh, run as a stalwart. Um, there's a little bit of removal there. Once again, two for a two-two um, with with potential evasion, um, so you can make them not block if you want to exert it, and they take three. Uh, it's great. Um, life goes on. Eh, not loving it. Um, rampaging hippo. Once again, it could be early game cycling or late game bomb. So yes. Um, an immediate include for bitter, um, bitter bow sharpshooters. Um, cartouche of strength, absolutely. Um, dissenters deliverance. Now, destroy target artifact and then cycling for one green. Um, there are 
so many artifacts in this in this set, whether it's God Pharaoh's gift or um, uh, what's the there's an, the, the artifact that uh, Edifice of Authority. That deck won me so many games, and I lost so many other games because it was played against me, um, tapping down my creatures. So this is a maybe. Um, I mean, it's easily a sideboard card. Um, if you if you come against a, a deck that's playing quite a few artifacts, or uh, they have a couple ones that their deck revolves around, absolutely play that. Um, Haze of Pollen, uh, it's a fog. Um, realistically, um, you know, I'd rather play creatures. Um, six cents, um, whatever the other creature deals damage, come damage to a player, you may draw a card. Um, great if you have evasion. Um, otherwise, if it gave a bonus and, like if it gave, like, this creature gets plus one, plus zero, and whenever it deals to combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, great. If not, nah, I'm not worried about it. Uh, Bitter Blade Warrior, uh, you can exert it, it gets plus one, plus one, and Death Touch. Um, generally, I like when Death Touch is, is a defensible ability, because it stops your opponents. Um, whereas attacking with this on turn three, at a 3-3, three, three, you know, if they have a, if they have a bomb out there, they have, they have to think about, you know, do they want to take damage or do they want to lose a creature? Um, so that's a, that's a yes. Um, and then Benefaction of Ronus, so reveal the top five cards of your library. You may put a creature card from, from and or enchantment card from among them, among them into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. Uh, three, two, yeah, not really. Um, so those are our yeses. Once again, not crazy great. Like our, our green is okay, um, but it's not like crazy, 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 crazy. Um, where I think we're gonna move next, we're gonna go to the red. Uh, the Hour of Promise is still on maybe. Um, so Harsh Mentor is a yes. Uh, Granatic Titan. Um, the cycling is good. Um, and the late game bomb isn't bad. So I'll say yes, just based on how many previous colors we've gone through. And there's not super, not super creature heavy. Um, four, Puncturing Blow deals five damage to target creature. Um, removal is always great. There are better removal cards than this, so it's a maybe. Um, <laughs> speaking of that, Inferno Jet. Um, I know I just said no to a four spell, um, but this is a six. It does deal static damage to target opponent. Um, I thought this was a great card when I saw it. I was like, oh, it's fantastic. Um, and then I realized by turn six, um, it, I mean, this could be a game finisher. The fact that you can deal them six damage to the face, you know, maybe by turn six or turn seven, um, you've dealt them enough damage where they might be down to six. Um, so I'll put that kind of in the maybe pile. Um, Defiant Kenra is a no. It's a vanilla creature. Uh, Kindled Fury is a no. Uh, Granatic Titan, yes. War of Blades, yes. Uh, put them on someone else's target creature, and it deals two damage to that creature's controller. So not only do they take two to the face, and get, but they'll get a minus one. Um, Manticore Eternal, yes. Uh, Gilded uh, Ceridon, I think we had the regular Ceridon. There you go. So there's his his evolution uh, from Desert Ceridon to Gilded Ceridon. Um, so six four one cycling for red, yes. Uh, whenever he attacks, if you control a desert or if this is in your graveyard, target creature can't block this turn. Sure, let's go evasion. Uh, open fire, yes, an immediate. Uh, Pathmaker initiate. Uh, target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. With the amount of two powered creatures that we have, um, this is actually viable. Um, it's a two for two one, but uh, it's going to allow your creatures to sneak through. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, maybe a maybe, um, a 2-1 trample, um, and it becomes a 3-3 three, three if you exert it, uh, sh maybe, <laughs> um, and then a blood, bloodlust insider, uh, 1 for 1-1, one, one. target creature gains haste until end of turn, um, if you're desperate for creature cards, I guess, um, maybe. <laughs> um, that's definitely the maybe pile. So once again, like, our 
green and our red where I initially thought, you know, maybe this is where our power is going to be. It's not like, oh my gosh, right? So let's look at black. And I think this black is really where it's gonna where it's gonna boil down to. So we have Bontu, yes. Um, Rascus right, search library for a card, put that into your hand, shuffle your library. Um, maybe um, Lurching Rot Beast, yep. Wretched Camel, um, yeah, because we're gonna have we're gonna have some deserts. Uh, Bainwit Punisher is a yes. Um, a Corrosive Horde, pay two, attacking, target attacking zombie gains in, in uh, indestructible. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, that's, so that's some, that's some kind of synergy with, uh, stuff like that. Um, Carrion's Creature, once again, we've talked about this. It's a zombie bird. It is, it, it is evasion. It is a zombie. So it's possible that that might not be a bad idea. Um, Ruin Rat, um, one, one for, uh, one, one for two death touch. But when he does, exile target creature or target card from opponent's graveyard. Um, the one one's death touch is going to keep a lot of creatures at bay, which is going to allow you then to build out your your board state. Um, so it might be a good way just to get out an early creature, because um, from what you can see, our black for right now is like four four three. Um, two four three. So I mean, that's a pretty high curve. So getting us something out, you know. Uh, small and early might not be bad. Um, morning wall. Um, eh. yes, it's a yes, it's a zombie. Um, but realistically, I'm not loving it. Baneful Emmet is a yes. Um, whenever you put a minus, put, put one or whenever you put one or more minus one on a creature, uh, put that many one one insect creature tokens. So okay, so not too bad. Um, Blighted Bat is 2-1 for 3, and it gains haste. So you, you're going to play that on turn 4 and gain haste. Meh. Um, Stir the Sands, create 3 zombie creature tokens, and cycling. Oh, when you cycle it, you get a, you get 1. So 6 mana, though, that's that's kind of where we're sitting, and we're like, uh, that's really not worth it. Even turn 4 cycling, or turn 5 cycling, or turn 6 cycling. Um... I guess if you're going to turn six and you don't have nothing else better to play, this is not a bad card. But realistically, um, not uh, not a great card. If it was an instant, sure, instant, we put it in immediately. Um, but it's a sorcery card, so we'll put it in the maybe pile. Um, Cartouche is a yes, um, and then uh, Miastic Mummy uh, is a yes because this allows us to feed our graveyard. So, at this point, we know we're not going to be playing either one of those because we're not playing blue. Our red has got removal. Our black has got a lot of zombies on it. Or in it, I should say. Um, so, just looking at it, I mean, that's kind of our... Our black's got a really high curve. Um, with some maybes up there. Our green has got a fairly low curve. I mean, we got some twos, we got a couple of threes. Um, just looking at it. So, I mean, we might even choose to build a tricolor deck. We might even go black, red, green just to get the best of all worlds. Um, now, obviously, with things like. Um, what I'm looking at is how many double, double um, black or double red or double green am I looking at? Because those are going to be infinitely harder to cast once you start playing three colors. Um, so I think if 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 this was if I was in a tournament situation, I think I'd build red, black, green, and I would just take the best out of the three and build it that way. So I'm putting away the red ones that I didn't really need. Um, I'm gonna get rid of those two because honestly, I'd rather be playing different things or activating different abilities. Um, Hour of Promise is gonna go in purely because I'm playing three colors. So yes, I can look for two deserts 
and get the two zombie tokens, or I can color fix. Um, I'm not going to play that main deck, um, and I'm not going to play white. So white's going to go away, which means the white desert I have, I'm not going to utilize that. But I do have red, and I do have green, and I do have the 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 the, the non-colored one. So at this point, um, I know that I'm going to separate them now into creature and non-creature, just to see where I'm sitting. Because obviously you would hate to play, be like, oh, great, I have a great deck, and then realize you have like, you know, nine creatures, which is not going to win you anything. So those are my creature non-creatures. Non-creature, creature, non-creature, creature, 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 non-creature, creature. Creature, non-creature, got all of those cartouches. Uh, non-creature, creature, creature, uh, creature, 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 cool. So, how many, do we have any zombies over here? No, do we have any zombies over here? No, so realistically, the only the, the black works with zombies. So how many cards do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, sorry. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27. So we should be, uh, and we're also looking at adding in the, the Kopesh, potentially. Um, so what did I say? We had 27. So we need to shave it down by um, 5 or 4 cards. So then we look at it, we're like, okay, well, what, you know, do we need 2 Granitic Titans? You know, realistically, that double red is going to kill us. Because we have so much other double red, but the Manticore and the second Granatic Titan, it would be really hard to pull it off if we were to cast it. So I can take that one out. Um, Word of the Blades is staying in. Open Fire is staying in. Uh, Harsh Mentor is definitely staying in. That's staying in. That's staying in. So that my red there is, is set. I can't really shave anything else without making my deck worse. Um... We need the Stir of the Sands, we need the Cartouche, we need the Hour of Promise, all for color, at least for color fixing this, just for being a really good card. Um, Bitterblade Warrior, um, the Kenra needs to stay, Run as a Stalwart could come out. Um, Rampaging Hippo is really, really good, even though it's double green, it's still a 5-6 Trampler with Cycling. Um, and this guy's really good. So realistically, um, this is a this is a potential. This could potentially come out. Um, now that would leave us one, two, oops, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine creatures, um, plus whatever we're gonna have in black. So uh, I just realized you guys can't see where the where my black is on the on the board here. So um, for now, I'm going to take that out. We're going to see. So that leaves us with 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25. So more than likely than I'm not going to play the, on the, the Honed Kopesh. Um, just because I, with looking at my curve, my turns 3, 4, and 5 are going to be pretty full. Um, so Carrion's Creature, once again... It's great, but the fact that we don't really have any other um, synergy with zombies in any of my other colors, only black, it's not great. Um, I don't have an activation for this. So whenever you play, whenever you put more one or more minus one minus one on a creature, create that many, you know, tokens. Now, don't get me wrong; it works with the cartouche. Um, it works with, I think, the, yeah, the Bane Whip Punisher. And the Baneful Emmet. So it, it might be worth it to keep it, the fact that it is an enchantment. Um, I'm actually going to remove the Miastic Mummy. I don't want to discard cards. I don't have enough recursion for my graveyard to make it worthwhile. If you're still here at 44 minutes, 
I applaud you. <laughs> I did not realize I was going to be taking this long. So I'm actually going to keep that because, I, you know, looking at it for a second time, I'm like, yeah, you know what? There's actually enough synergy. Um, so what did I say? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So if we were to take out, uh, I'm going to take out the accursed horde. Yes, there are zombies, but I'd rather pay that two mana for something else. Uh, evasion is, is fun, but um, I think I'm going to try and keep this in. So I'm going to get rid of the carrion creature. So that uses one, so that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, eighteen, twenty. Wait, wait, that's gonna be that's gotta be wrong. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. Okay, so that leaves us with that's twenty-two non-land cards um, and eighteen. So we definitely need to add something back in here. So maybe I will throw the carrion creature back. Um, let me see here. Or do I put in the owned, the honed Kopesh? So what did I say? So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 23, so 17 land. Hmm. I'm going to put in the honed Kopesh. There you go. So that is 24 non-land permanents, 16 lands, which you can clearly see up there. So there's four of those, one of those, one of those. So that would be my deck. I think running this, there's not a super amount of synergy between the colors. It kind of seems like each color is doing its own thing, but the fact that you're going to be playing things every single turn because the curve isn't super super high or you're going to be cycling or you're going to be drawing extra cards um these are the sorts of things where you know we, we look at so um at this point if you want a little bit more um breakdown i would actually see how my curve is so what i'm doing is i'm, I'm organizing everything by casting cost so obviously most of the time um I mean, your, your twos and your threes should take up, um, geez, um, a majority of your, uh, so you can obviously see how my curve goes, right? I have one, one casting thing, and then, you know, six, two casts, uh, what, eight, three casts, two, four casts. Um, if I were to thin anything out, I would easily look at this side, but... I think I'm okay for now because then most of those have cycling. Um, there's a good chance I'll never play them, but it may be good to be able to to draw late game. Um, yeah, and realistically, I don't have a lot of double colors that I have to worry about. There's a double here and there's a double red there. There's a double green for the Rampaging Hippo if I don't cycle it. Um, so yeah, I'd run these four, uh, these four, deserts just because they're cycling lands and they're they are pump lands for the oasis um yeah so that would be my deck let me know let me know what you guys think um i know this has been a long video um but you guys you know let me know what you guys really think about uh about what this you know how this build came about um yeah let me know what you think would you change anything uh would you uh you know what would you what would you have done would you have played different colors um, let me know and uh, thanks guys for tuning in uh, sorry that took a lot longer than it than I thought it was going to but that being said when we do when we do uh, pre-releases you do get 50 minutes this video is coming up on 49 minutes and 24 seconds so we would be right on time to uh, to jump into round one of our uh, of our sealed event so guys thank you guys so much for tuning in give me your feedback let me know what you guys think and uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you guys next time bye bye